Yeah, uh, so uh, I mean, I can't thank the organizers, but I can thank the main organizers for giving me this opportunity to uh, give this talk. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay. And I'll be talking about higher spin corrections to entanglement ent entropy, and it's, uh, it's a work which I've been uh, pursuing for a, about a year and a half. Uh, it's with a student here uh, uh, at uh, Shavik Datta at the Indian Institute of Science and Michael Ferralino, who is a student of uh, Prem Kumar at the Swansea University. Uh, and uh, let me uh, begin uh, with a motivation to the question, uh, which I'll be asking th uh, through the uh, talk. So, uh, so the question is simple. Uh, consider a field theory which admits high, higher spin symmetry. We have been hearing about that several times uh, in this uh, conference. And uh, what we want to do is introduce chemical potentials uh, conjugate to these conserved higher spin currents. And uh, the question we are asking is a simple question, uh, is to ask whether we can uh, systematically uh, obtain corrections to the partition function, the entanglement entropy as an expansion in chemical potentials. So why is this question interesting? Uh, so uh, we have heard several talks, uh, higher spin uh, theory, as Matthias said, are toy examples. In fact, there was an embedding of these theories in, into string theory, so, uh, uh, which has these large gauge symmetries. Uh, holographic duals of these uh, theories have been constructed, as we all know, uh, in D is equal to two and three dimensions. And uh, this answer would provide uh, more insight into thermodynamics and entanglement entropies of these dual theories. So the thermodynamics uh, of theories which are dual to U1 chemical potentials are well studied. In fact, we teach them in, in our physics courses as Bose-Einstein distributions and Fermi-Dirac distributions. And uh, the question we are asking is, can we generalize this uh, to the you know, in which we uh, deform these theories with higher spin chemical potentials. So uh, let's begin with a concrete setup. Uh, so we consider conformal field theories in D equals 2, which admits a conserved uh, spin 3 current. So there are three indices. It's traceless and symmetric. And you can convince yourself that there are only two independent components. Uh, these are the ones. And you can organize them into holomorphic and anti-holomorphic currents of this form. Uh, here is the organization. Uh, and uh, deforming the theory uh, with uh, chemical potential corresponding to this charge J00 uh, is actually equivalent to adding this term. Okay? Uh, so we have J00, and if you add these terms, what happens is that the, uh, the parity odd term actually cancels. Uh, and uh, so, but we have to do, be sh careful about the integration. We integrate the spatial uh, direction first. So that's, the, uh, that's sort of the way we are going to treat this, deforming the theory with this high spin chemical potential. And uh, therefore, we need to study conformal field theories deformed by this per perturbation, by this per uh, high spin perturbation. The perturbation is actually more special uh, than the usual ones which you study. Uh, so this is holomorphic. Okay? Uh, it's holomorphic. And uh, it's also uh, uh, unconventional in the sense that it has dimension 3. Okay? Uh, one usually studies marginal perturbations, but this has dimension three, and uh, I therefore it is irrelevant. And uh, we need to, if we want to get uh, proper answers, we need to carefully choose the prescription to ensure the answers are physical. And uh, what is the meaning of that? Uh, so it's basically that our resulting answers must coincide with the deformation of the Hamiltonian, uh, which is the conventional way you think about deforming a theory with, uh, with chemical potential, uh, where the Hamiltonian gets shifted. And we will see how to achieve this as we uh, proceed. So our main focus will be actually uh, to use the perturbation theory developed uh, to evaluate corrections to single interval uh, entanglement entropy uh, when the theory is deformed by this higher spin current. And to put it in context, let me recall uh, what we know about the single interval uh, entanglement entropy. Uh, so uh, I, I'm sure many of the people here will know this result. So consider a 1 plus 1 dimensional conformal field theory with central charge C uh, at finite temperature. And let, uh, the, let us focus on a subinterval A. Uh, and the entanglement entropy uh, is given by this uh, expression. It has this logarithmic growth uh, uh, with, uh, with the distance. Uh, and there is a similar expression for the Rene entropy. And the way it is generally uh, calculated, which um, uh, Rob Myers alluded to, is by a, a replica trick in which one evaluates the density uh, matrix uh, by looking at the partition function of the CFT branched, uh, n, uh, branched on this interval. Uh, there are n copies of the CFT branched on this interval, and one has to evaluate the partition function. And the partition function can be actually evaluated uh, by a uniformization map. 
okay, which actually uh, maps this n branch surface to a plane. Uh, here, for instance, z is the coordinate on the, uh, on the branch surface, w is the uh, coordinate on the uniformized Riemann surface, and these are the endpoints of the interval. Uh, here is the uniformization map. So it can be shown that, uh, this was done by Cardi and Calabrese, that uh, the reduced density matrix is basically the partition function on this n-sheeted uh, surface. And uh, that is equivalent to inserting two uh, twist operators at the endpoints of the intervals, the y1 and y2, uh, of dimensions uh, of this form. Uh, so uh, the result, uh, before I even uh, say it, okay, let me uh, quote the result. Uh, so for any CFT which, uh, which admits a spin-3 current, uh, we show that the entanglement entropy for a single interval is corrected. Uh, so here it is. Uh, here is the correction. So this is the first term which we are all familiar with. And here is this uh, correction. And uh, this part is part, uh, you know, just comes out from the scaling. Okay. And uh, what we will do is basically evaluate this uh, correction and prove that it's universal. Okay. So let's contrast this with the situation we know. Okay. So here's the contrast. So consider the uh, uh, CFT, but on a, uh, on a ring of radius r at temperature beta. Uh, now here the CFT is on the torus, and again, uh, uh, it admits a high temperature expansion. And uh, this is the leading term, which we are all familiar with. And uh, there is a systematic uh, set of corrections, uh, which are basically finite size corrections. And these corrections actually depend on the spectrum of the theory. Uh, and they are sensitive and they capture information of the uh, spectrum of the theory. And here uh, it is contrasted with this uh, universal term for this higher spin deformation. Okay. Um, uh, so what can we use this as a result for? Okay. Uh, as we have heard in the previous talk, there is this proposal of uh, the Wilson line for entanglement entropy. And uh, since we have this universal result, uh, it generalizes this proposal of Ryu and uh, Takanaki for higher spin theories. And since we have this universal results, it can serve as a check. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's what I was saying. The proposal uses a churn simons formulation, as we have heard. Uh, it, the, it is written in terms of the Wilson line uh, in the bulk, joining the two endpoints of the interval. And uh, the formula which we actually focus on is basically uh, the SL3 version of it. Uh, this lambda, which, he, uh, which we heard about in a couple of talks before, uh, is 3 for this particular case. And there is a formula for this Wilson line uh, in actually for the, in the adjoint representation. Uh, and uh, there is a ex uh, precise expression for the entanglement entropy given in terms of this Wilson line. And the CFT calculation we do at the order mu squared. In fact, we do, as I mentioned, we develop conformal perturbation theory. Uh, and it can serve as a precise check for this proposal. So we have two tasks, uh, developed conformal uh, perturbation theory for a theory deformed by a holomorphic higher spin current, and then use it to evaluate uh, entanglement entropy. So what are the simple theories we have uh, to perform these checks uh, or tasks? Uh, so we have a theory of uh, n complex for, for, for free fermion. It realizes the W1 plus infinity charge, and here is the realization. Uh, you can see the you can see the spin-3 current here. Uh, and uh, this realizes, and it's a free theory, so we can explicitly calculate this. And as we said, for the entanglement entropy, we need the twist operator. And there's an explicit construction of the twist operator in terms of uh, bosonized fields uh, in this case. We also have the theory of n uh, bosons, which realizes the W infinity lambda equals 1. So there is two parameters. Uh, and uh, for this theory uh, of complex boson, uh, though there is no explicit realization of the twist operators, you can actually evaluate the correlators, whatever correlators you want, using old uh, methods developed during the initial string perturbation days. Uh, so first, before we go to the entanglement entropy, let's talk, talk about the partition function. Uh, so to order mu squared, uh, here is the correction. Uh, so we just look at the partition function. This uh, we bring down from the exponential. This is the first term. This is the second term. And we have to evaluate it in the undeformed CFT. Uh, and, uh, and we have to integrate on the infinite spatial line and at a finite temperature. So the one-point function, the first term is the one-point function. It vanishes uh, because of translational invariance uh, on the plane. And uh, you can map it to the cylinder, which we have to do the calculations on. And uh, it vanishes. So we have to look at the two-point function. Here's the two-point function on the cylinder. Uh, there's a normalization which we fix uh, by demanding certain uh, uh, normalization uh, to tune with the bulk. So there's a normalization for that. But this is the weight because this is dimension 3. And you can see the typical, uh, uh, typical behavior of the two-point function. And what we are instructed to do is basically substitute it inside this and do this integral. 
And of course, there is this prescription for doing the integral. Uh, the prescription is you integrate on the spatial slice first and, and then integrate on the time direction uh, so that we pick out the charge. Okay? And uh, what happens is that the integral can be analytically done in this case. And uh, so we perform the integral first on the spatial direction and then uh, along the time. And in fact, here there are two integrals to be done. Okay. The first integral, once you do it, actually gives a constant value. And the second just gives this extensive scaling, actually. So here, uh, just to illustrate that the fact that the integrals can be easily done, uh, here's a simple integral of the kind. This is actually a sixth power. But uh, I've just illustrated with the second power. Uh, this integral, I think, I, mean, I, I think everybody here would know how to do it. And you can see that uh, this integral gives a constant. Uh, so the result for the partition function uh, is the following. Uh, here, there's a correction to the partition function, and there's a correction to the universal Cardi result. Okay, and this also is independent of the spin three current lambda. I mean, it doesn't have this normalization lambda. Okay, and it's universal in that sense. And uh, let me give a history of this term. Uh, uh, this correction, this order mu squared agrees uh, with this correction to this high temperature partition function of the spin three black hole, which was constructed earlier. It also agrees with CFT computations of Gabriel, uh, Hartman, and Jin. Uh, and they were done in two different ways. The, uh, the Cross and Perlmutter, actually, the, these authors, the previous uh, earlier work, took advantage of the free free realization. And they could evaluate it for these two points. And uh, Gabriel, Hartman, and Jin uh, developed much more sophisticated techniques. Uh, uh, they used these modular transformation of uh, torus amplitudes to evaluate the high temperature. Uh, our method is re reasonably simple. It just develops conformal perturbation theory. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, this strategy has been pushed uh, to the next order uh, recently. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so let me, uh, so with this sort of uh, you know, uh, confidence, let's go to this uh, entanglement entropy. Okay. So uh, the setup is again uh, quite simple. Uh, so what we, ha uh, we have to do basically is to uh, you know, evaluate, uh, set up a perturbation expansion to the single interval uh, entanglement entropy. Uh, and uh, the Lagrangian, again, is deformed by this particular, uh, particular uh, term, uh, which involves a higher spin current. And note uh, that you know, if you think about the way this partition function is evaluated uh, using the replica trick, there is a spin three current for at each copy of the sheet. So expanding in mu, we need to evaluate the following sort of terms. So this is the first term. Uh, this is the second term in perturbation theory. Uh, and these correlators need to be evaluated on the cylinder, as we have seen. And then the integrals need to be performed. And at order mu squared, there's a double integral to be performed. And the linear term again vanishes uh, precisely due to the same reason, uh, due to the fact that there is translation invariance. <laughs> and you can actually explicitly check uh, it using the free fermion or free boson realization. Now, uh, again, uh, there is, in this term, there is holomorphic and anti-holomorphic cross terms, and they are decoupled, okay? uh, the currents decouple, and you can show that the cross terms are not important. And uh, therefore, the only correlator to evaluate is basically the, the following four-point function, two twist operators and uh, two spin currents. And uh, what, we will, uh, what I will show right now is a rough outline of how this uh, correlator is evaluated, uh, and then we will uh, perform the next steps. Okay. And this correlator will turn out to be universal. Okay. And by conformal invariance, uh, so let me just go ahead and outline the calculation of this correlator. So by conformal invariance, uh, the correlator uh, can be fixed to this form. Uh, I have basically taken out the scalings uh, of the spin three currents and, and the dimension of the twist operators. I've just taken it out. So here is basically the uh, function of cross ratios. And this is a holomorphic function because these are holomorphic currents. And uh, what we have left to do is basically evaluate this function f of x. Uh, now, the fact that I have mentioned that it's a holomorphic uh, function, and because there is this, uh, uh, this exchange symmetry uh, of this, uh, because there are two uh, same operators, two W currents, there's exchange symmetry. Uh, and therefore, there is this symmetry of this, uh, uh, this function of the cross ratios. Uh, uh, which basically exchange, uh, reciprocates them. You can see that Z1 going to Z2 basically uh, inverts X. So therefore, there is the symmetry. We can fix the normalization uh, by the Z1 going to Z2 limit. So I basically extract the normalization. And then uh, what we have to do for the rest is basically look at these limits, Z1 going to Y1 and Z2 going to Y2. 
Uh, basically, these are the remnants of the cross ratios. And if you see the structure, basically Z1 going to Y1 is when the W current goes to the twist operators. So we need to know some information about the OPE of the twist operators with the W current. And uh, uh, so here is the sort of uh, uh, reason uh, in which we can, uh, you know, we, we need just a very simple properties and we can fix the correlator as we will see. So, uh, so we know that uh, this is a twist operator, okay? And uh, this, uh, this W is an untwisted sector. So therefore, this actually belongs to a twisted sector. And the, by definition, this twist operator creates the ground state in the twisted sector. Okay? And, uh, and in fact, it cannot be W because this correlator vanishes. Okay? Uh, this W T tau tau bar vanishes. It cannot be just tau n, sorry. It cannot be the tau n because this correlator vanishes. And therefore, since this is the ground state, uh, twist operator is the ground state, the, the dimension of whatever this is has to be higher than tau n. Okay? And by dimension analysis, we uh, obtain this constraint, okay? that m is dimension less than this. Now, uh, note that the W current also involves the sum uh, over uh, the W currents of all the copies. Okay? So therefore, it's invariant under permutation. Okay? And therefore, this does not have branch cuts. Okay? And uh, so the insertion of uh, uh, twist operator basically, in fact, that's their job. They cyclic, per, it cyclically permutes the copies. And therefore, this is invariant. And therefore, m is an integer. And using all these informations, I'll give you more justification soon, uh, later again for this, uh, uh, that it actually, this function truncates. This truncates to this order. Okay. And uh, we can, in fact, simplify this uh, and write it in terms of some modified cross ratio of this form. So it truncates at x squared order. I said it was uh, less than 3, and that therefore it truncates at this order. And uh, now, uh, so we have fixed this function up to two undetermined uh, numbers, f1 and f2. And that we can fix by the OPE. Okay. So we know the WW OPE. Okay. Uh, it is given by uh, this general formula. And all the lambda dependence in the WW OPE is basically sitting here. Okay. So we substitute this OPE. Okay. Uh, and uh, expand, uh, uh, Laurent expands in Z12 variables, and then try to match okay, on both sides, and try to fix this F1 and F2. And if you do that, uh, we need, as you see from this side, you, you have these composite operators uh, on this side of the OPE. So we need to actually evaluate uh, the composite operator with two twist operators, and that, we, uh, that can be done by uniformization. Okay. Here's the method uh, of evaluating. It can be all these correlators can be evaluated by uniformization. And uh, if you do that, uh, and if you match the both terms, if you match both terms, uh, you basically you can fix uh, these functions. In fact, there are four equations, uh, four equations, but only two parameters. And in fact, there is a unique solution for this. And here is the solution uh, for these two functions. And uh, and we have actually, though this, uh, this method I have presented looks, uh, uh, looks sort of, I've used several arguments. We have checked this method uh, in varieties of ways. Uh, the four point function, uh, as I said, I had a free, free field theories to play with. And in fact, the four point function agrees with that uh, we obtained in free field theories. Uh, using the same procedure, one can obtain uh, these kind of correlations. Instead of the W conserved current, you can do the uh, uh, stress tensor one. Uh, and in fact, this can be obtained by other methods, like using conformal ward identities, and uh, the method agrees. In fact, finally, there's another method which also reveals the universal nature of the fact that this four-point function is universal, is the fact that if you have two twist operators and WW, and it's a sum over copies, uh, in fact, by this uniformization map, it's actually uh, sum of uh, images of these W currents uh, inserted in these various copies. And, the and we perform this method also, and the resultant uh, correlator agrees with the OPE method. And uh, now, uh, so since we have all the ingredients up to our mu, mu squared, we can just substitute inside. So we are instructed to go to the cylinder and then perform the two integrals. Okay. So here's an expression. Uh, you, these are the expansion. Here is F1 and F2, and we have to do, perform these two integrals. And I said these integrals can be done uh, on the cylinder. So what we have to do is basically integrate the spatial direction first. That's the prescription we have chosen. Uh, and then separate the coincident integrals. This is another prescription. And one can show that the result depends basically uh, on the residues. Uh, after doing the integrals explicitly, you can actually see uh, that it actually just depends on the uh, residue of the double poles and the location uh, of the simple poles. Okay. 
residue and the location of the simple poles. I will give more justification to this later. Uh, so the, uh, uh, the result for this correction to the order mu squared is basically some term like this and these integrals i1 and i2 with f1 and f2 evaluated. Uh, I1 and I2 uh, are these forms. You can actually do the integrals. So here's the result for I1 and I2. Uh, they are, uh, they are uh, non-trivial functions of delta and beta, the interval and the temperature. Uh, they're quite uh, complicated functions. But there are, uh, they satisfy several checks. So if you uh, take the n going to one limit, okay, it's supposed to be the entanglement entropy. Okay, and one further takes uh, the extensive limit, basically. And uh, if you take the extensive limit, uh, basically it's supposed to be the thermal entropy, uh, and uh, it sort of agrees. Uh, it agrees with this results, and and the order mu squared result uh, agrees with the Wilson line proposal. Uh, the non, uh, in fact, it's quite non-trivial. Uh, this is a very non-trivial function, and uh, the Wilson line proposal uh, actually gives uh, when you expand it out, uh, it gives this very non-trivial function. Uh, so note that this is a function evaluated just in perturbation theory, and that's a function evaluated in holography. It's a non-trivial function, and they agree. And uh, this has been pushed further, again, uh, to order mu to the power of 4 uh, by uh, Jian Long. So uh, as I, I should say, say a little emphasize this, this, this final result, uh, you know, there was a lot of labor in achieving this final result, uh, but in holography, it sort of comes out. I mean, it's just direct, uh, the expression is just there. We don't have to do all these sophisticated integrals to get these answers, but amazingly, they do match. So now, uh, let me just develop this perturbation theory further, because uh, it looks, it was quite non-trivial uh, that, you know, these results agreed, and uh, let's check this perturbation theory further. And uh, so we, we checked it, uh, we sort of, uh, to study the formal structure of the perturbation theory, further we considered M-free fermions on the torus with these chemical potentials turned on. Uh, so this is the U1, this is a stress tensor, and this is the spin 3. Okay. So we uh, considered case by case for these M-free fermions on the torus. And uh, what we did was uh, uh, just to, and uh, of course we evaluated, uh, in each of these cases we evaluate the partition function and the entanglement entropy. Okay. And these perturbations were actually studied before. Actually, the spin-3 perturbation uh, was actually studied in earlier uh, in the context of 2D Yang mills, uh, seen as a string theory. Uh, so it was studied earlier, and there was a prescription for doing the integrals there, too. Uh, and uh, so what we do is that, in this case, we evaluate corrections to partition function, single inter ent 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 entropy and entanglement. Uh, so uh, you know, for the partition function, because this is th theory of free fermions, Partition function is quite simple. This is the answer for the partition function. And for each of the case, for if it was a U1 chemical potential, this is just a constant. Uh, the shift is just a constant. Uh, and the sum can be done ex exactly. It's, uh, it's given in terms of this theta functions. Uh, if, uh, if it was a deformation of stress tensor, uh, it's uh, just linear. Uh, that function is linear. And it's just a shift of this, uh, this temperature, tau. And for the spin-3 uh, chemical potential, uh, the sum is not exactly doable, but uh, there exists a form for each term in the perturbative expansion in mu. And uh, at, at order mu to the n, uh, it's supposed to be a quasi-modular form of weight 3n. And this was studied earlier by these uh, Zagier and Kenko in uh, mathematics uh, literature. And what we can do is compare this result of perturbation theory to these exact results developed. And in each case, we uh, obtain ag agreement. Okay. And I'll just uh, uh, tell the results for the spin-3 chemical potential. So the correction uh, to the partition function uh, is of this form. Okay. Again, it's uh, exactly the same form. It's, uh, it starts at mu squared. And uh, here, what we have to do is basically evaluate the correlation functions on the torus okay, and uh, perform the integrals on the torus using the prescription uh, uh, which we followed uh, again. And uh, in fact, all these can be done. Uh, uh, and uh, if we do our perturbation theory, uh, this is our result uh, uh, to the partition function, correction of the partition function. As you see, it's a weight 6 uh, modular form. Okay. And, uh, and expanding, and what is this green? Uh, expanding uh, basically the simple expression, uh, the simple expression uh, uh, where f of m is uh, is mu, uh, okay, sorry, what is this? Oh, yeah, mu m squared, okay. Uh, expanding this out, we get actually this sum. Uh, we get this sum. 
and in fact this uh, and this is the result of doing our integrals and this is exactly equal to this actually uh, and um, it's uh, it was quite a non trivial agreement uh, so we actually uh, this sort of tests uh, the fact that our prescription actually is reproducing the deformation in the hamiltonian picture and uh, the results uh, for the corrections to Rene entropy also can be written in terms of this quasi elliptic function of weight 6 so maybe I won't uh, give you that uh, uh, you know, detailed function which is given in the paper, uh, but what I will do is I, I will show you a very non-trivial check it satisfies. Okay. Uh, okay, there are several checks in fact it satisfies. Uh, it goes to the cylinder limit, it works out. The thermal entropy, it works out. And let's let, uh, illustrate one non-trivial check. Okay. Uh, and th so this is the check. The Rene entropy, when the size of the interval equals uh, the size, system size, in n equals one limit, where it is actually the entangled entropy, should uh, should agree go to the thermal entropy. Okay, and the thermal entropy to mu squared we have an answer. Okay, so the Rene entropy at mu squared at uh, delta equals L is given by this expression. Okay, so this is a complicated expression again in terms of the modular form forms, and in fact uh, here there is the sum over copies. There is the sum over copies here. It's quite a uh, non-trivial expression, and in fact it can be shown. Uh, that, that this Rene entropy at mu squared, uh, it actually is the correction to the thermal entropy. Uh, and it's very non-trivial, uh, uh, how these things arranges itself and uh, agrees with the thermal entropy. Okay, so what are the other directions uh, uh, which one can pursue? Uh, so these methods can be, of course, extended to Rene entropy and entanglement of excited state. And this is one ongoing work uh, with a student and Prem Kumar. Uh, I, I, I mean, if people want to know what we have done, uh, I think I can talk to them uh, separately. And uh, so, uh, and also, uh, so this was restricted to two dimensions. Uh, but uh, you know, there are higher spin currents in d equals three. And uh, in fact, uh, in fact, if you uh, if you want to preserve all spatial symmetries, uh, this is the charge you would like to deform it with. Uh, here it is. Okay, and this deformation preserves all the uh, symmetries. And for uh, Owen vector model, this is just a bilinear in fields, and the path integral seems to be doable. And uh, it'll be interesting to study this deformation and understand the implication in Vasiliev theory. So I will end with and that. Questions? So you, you discussed the agreement between your calculation, which, yes. uh, if I understood correctly, is, is even true at finite n. This, uh, yeah, finite, finite n, I mean. Uh, so, so, in, yeah. so there was a connection between your calculation and the calculation that we heard from in electric. The Wilson Dresden, line, yes, yeah. Which was done in the gravity region, so yes. it was very large n. Yeah, yeah. So by your calculation, if I understand correctly, yeah, it's just perturbative. Yeah, it's just that so mu squared term is universal. Ah, okay. The mu squared term is universal. After that, it deviates actually. After okay, that, so there are some things that agree and some things that don't. Yeah, yeah. Agree. After that, at the, at the mu to the fourth order, there are finite c corrections and so on. Ah, okay. Yeah. Any other question? Not let us uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.